If you're a video editor, you've probably seen the headlines about Adobe Premiere's brand new 14.2 update, which unlocks hardware encoding, AKA finally taking advantage of the brand new GPUs. This is a place where Premiere Pro has really lagged behind the rest of the industry compared to Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve. And it's because of this that they always finish dead last in these bar chart tests where they're comparing export and render times, because Premiere has always used and relied on the CPU instead of taking advantage of the GPU but no more with this update. So you've probably seen the headlines 300, 400% more efficient when you're using this brand new update in Premiere with new graphics cards. And that is insane. I think this brings it back to the playing field with the other two applications. And I'm really excited to see how Premiere is going to continue moving forward. However, all those flashy headlines that you're seeing are using Nvidia graphics card, more so the new RTX cards, the 2060, 2070, and 2080 cards. And I am a Mac user and Mac hasn't used Nvidia graphics cards for almost a decade now, which means that I'm stuck with AMD. And from what I was seeing, no one was testing it with AMD graphics cards. And there were only one or two articles I read that briefly mentioned that this update also took advantage of AMD's graphics cards. But because I'm a Mac user, I hadn't seen anyone seeing these kind of increases or testing this. So I wanted to test this for myself and see if these AMD cards are actually getting that insane increase like the Nvidia cards are, or if that's only for the Nvidia cards, because I know that Nvidia worked hand in hand with Adobe to make this update possible, and that's why their cards seem to be taking the most advantage of this brand new update. So as a Mac user, I have a 16 inch MacBook Pro. I actually just published a video about that. So if you wanna see what spec I'm running and what my machine does, check it out here. I'm running eight gigabytes of AMD Radeon Pro 5500 on my laptop. So I wanted to see if I was getting these crazy increases on my laptop, or if it was just an incremental update, or if I could even take advantage of this update whatsoever, because it didn't seem like AMD was getting any limelight with this update. So I ran some tests and here are the results. But before we get into the results of my tests on my laptop, I wanna tell you how to actually enable this update on your computer. So obviously the first thing you're gonna to have to do is update Premiere to version 14.2. That's the one that takes advantage of this new update. So once you've updated Premiere, what you're going to do is go into preferences. You're going to go down to the media tab and you're going to check off the last checkbox in that window that says enable hardware acceleration. This is going to require that you restart Premiere, so you're gonna quit and then restart it. And once you've done that, you've now enabled the brand new hardware acceleration update. When I first tried this out before this update came out, actually, it completely crashed Premiere constantly for me. Premiere would not work for more than five seconds without crashing, not saving my work, and I was freaking out. And I asked Adobe, what the heck is up? I have this brand new 16 inch laptop, nothing is working. And they, I sent all my crash reports and they said, oh, you have uh, hardware acceleration enabled. You have to disable that. I was like, what's the point of this brand new 16 inch laptop? I have this great graphics card in it and it's not even taking advantage of it. It's still using software encoding. That's dumb. So that's what I've been doing this whole time. But now we've enabled hardware acceleration. We've enabled the GPU. One thing I should also mention about enabling hardware acceleration, it actually limits the way you can export your videos. So if you're used to using VBR2 pass, that's no longer an option for hardware acceleration. You have to use VBR1 pass or CBR, which is kind of a bummer because VBR2 pass is going to give you that higher quality export that we know and love. But I think the trade-off here is worth it if you're using hardware acceleration when exporting because it's that little bit faster and it's easier on your laptop and actually taking advantage of that GPU. But that's up to you to decide whether or not that VBR2 pass is really worth the difference between GPU or software encoding. If you really need that two pass, you're gonna have to use software encoding and that sucks. But I personally, I feel like I can live with VBR1 pass if I'm using the GPU because it just makes my life easier. Just so you know what I was running these tests off of, I had an in and out point that was five minutes using Sony a7R 3 4K footage at 24 frames per second, a nice color grade and some graphics in there. So a full YouTube video that I was like genuinely, this is my usual workflow. So let's get into my test results and see if there's a difference between software encoding and hardware encoding. So for the first test, I use my usual export settings that I have for YouTube. I have a pretty high bit rate when I'm exporting for YouTube and so this was the result. 
With software encoding without using hardware encoding, I got 10 minutes and 39 seconds. With hardware encoding, I got 9 minutes and 26 seconds. So about a minute and 10 seconds off, that's a nice improvement, but not this massive improvement that we were seeing on the PC side using Nvidia graphics cards. I ran this test two more times and I used lesser settings than what I would to see if there was still a difference. So instead of exporting at 65 megabits per second, I exported at 25 megabits per second and that brought down the file size greatly, but it didn't affect the export times that outrageously. I always kept the same exact settings for both the hardware and software encoding tests, so everything was equal when doing these tests. The only difference was whether or not I was using the GPU because of the different hardware encoding. So on the first 25 megabits per second test, I got 10 minutes and four seconds for software encoding, and I got eight minutes and 56 seconds for hardware encoding. A much more noticeable difference here, but again, still not those crazy, crazy percentage differences that we were seeing on the PC side. The final test, however, seemed to be much more even, much less of a difference. There was only a difference of about 45 seconds between these two tests, and I thought it was very intriguing seeing that the difference kind of got less the more I did this test. And I think it's because the fans were already spinning outrageously fast on both of these tests since I did them back to back to back to back. So for this final test using the exact same settings as the test beforehand, 25 megabits per second, I had software encoding at nine minutes and 17 seconds and hardware encoding at eight minutes, 35 seconds. Again, only a difference of about 40 seconds, so not crazy. However, what I did notice while using hardware encoding is that the timeline was so much smoother while playing back. Before, as you could see in my MacBook Pro review, I was talking about how the timeline would constantly lag and just drop frames beyond compare, and it was almost unusable. You would just have to constantly baby Premiere so it could just play back in the timeline. I was using 4K Sony footage, and I was playing back between one quarter and one eighth resolution and it was still freezing and lagging and dropping frames beyond compare and I never understood why at such a low resolution it couldn't even play back my timeline. But with hardware acceleration enabled, I was just blazing through this. It was smooth, it was flawless, it was nice and although the actual export times weren't drastically different, they were marginally better. I was getting between 9 and 15 percent in my tests increase with the hardware acceleration. So that was nice but nowhere near that 300 to 400 percent increase we were seeing with some of the RTX chips from Nvidia. Even though the actual export times weren't that different with hardware acceleration enabled, I greatly appreciated having the timeline much smoother. And during those tests where hardware acceleration was enabled, my fans did not kick up as often or as high. They would usually kick up about 70% of the way through the export, and then they would kick up maybe I'd say on a medium setting, so much quieter, and my computer was running much cooler. So it's very nice to see that the GPU actually is being used when hardware acceleration is enabled. I could hear and notice a substantial difference between when it is enabled and when it isn't enabled, and the computer was much cooler to the touch, which I greatly appreciate. Compared to when software encoding was being used, it ran the fans instantly. I hit export and they just wound up to 100% like my jet engine was taken off, and they did not shut off until like two minutes after finishing the export. So that just goes to show you that it's not as much on the CPU. The CPU is not being heated up as much. It doesn't need to be cooled down as much when GPU acceleration is enabled because more of that workload is going to the GPU instead of the CPU. So it's really nice to see even though we're not getting those tremendous increases like on PC using Nvidia cards, it's much a much better experience with Premiere on the Mac even if it's not 300, 400% faster. It's just a nice quality of life upgrade. And I really hope that in future updates, Premiere actually does take advantage of AMD chips as well, especially on laptops. I hope that they start upgrading those laptops to take advantage of that, not just desktop grade cards, because not everyone has a desktop grade card to take advantage of. Even though eGPUs are a great solution and I would love to get an Nvidia card onto my Mac, Mac OS does not allow for any Nvidia graphics card at the moment. So you can't, no matter what, on the Mac ecosystem, take advantage of this awesome new upgrade with those RTX chips just because Mac doesn't have a good <laughs> relationship with Nvidia right now, which is a big bummer. I would love to see that change in the future, but it's, it's highly unlikely. So don't get your hopes up. It wasn't, you know, just some BS test, like this is what I'm going to be using in the real world. And those are the increases that I saw in my workflow. They were nice, but nowhere near 
desktop class RTX chips. So if you're a Mac user, definitely turn this on and take advantage of that update because you'll see a nice increase when your timeline is actually flowing and you can be happy because it's not freezing beyond compare and you're not getting those drop frames, but don't expect that level of performance from those headlines that you were seeing, 300 to 400% increase. That's just, that's not the reality on Mac right now. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, feel free to drop a like and a comment. It really does help out. I would love to know what you guys think. My name has been Mark Steiner and I'll see you next time.